Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are live at the Arnold. What's good? What up? How are we doing out here, <laughs> fellas? <laughs> was yeah. I was made for this. Was um, for that, yeah. Yeah. Listen. Yeah, stands up, gets really into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I like this. I think we need a crowd, fellas. No, I, I, yeah. Right? I, I agree. I think we thrive under pressure. I think we thrive when you know there's millions and millions and millions <laughs> of people watching us. Yes. So I think we're good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like we could take this show on the road, fellas. 100%. We're Imagine essentially like we had, like, on the road. We had, like, a tour. Yeah, like, we toured. Yeah. I, now... That would be. This is the thing about the tour, right? It's it's a little nerve wracking because if you go to one day and there's five people, yeah, but still got to give them a banger podcast though. But then there could be fifty, and then five hundred, and yeah. five million. Well, <laughs> but the thing is, if there was only if there was five people, you know, we'd have a nice intimate. Yeah, podcast, I agree. You know, you know what? I agree with that. Yeah. Maybe that's what we should I think, think about Danny going. Would like that. Yeah. I would like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the shout out to Granville Rotor, like, Rotary, Rotary Club. Rotary Club, that I was mean, our like, first live was, event. And if we can, you know, perform and provide quality content in front of 70 year olds that have yeah. no idea what's going on in life, then I think we can do it. That is true, and we did. Yeah, we yeah. did. Like, yeah, we did it. I mean, it was funny that we were in front of, like, the principal of the high school. Yeah. In front of the guy who runs the rec district and a bunch of old people. Yeah. So I think we could do it. I think maybe, maybe next year we should try to host a live show. Like that, for the Arnold, like bring that, bring the people in. That actually a, might be the a, move because we yeah. did that back in the day, and that have was pretty cool. Show. That would be fucking cool. I like that idea. Yeah. Fuck that. I like that idea. All right, so Danny, what's your uh, what's your vibe with the Arnold right now? What, what are you thinking, buddy? I know you got to meet one of the Go Ruck dudes, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. I when I think of the Arnold, I just think about like uh, rekindling anything from before. Yeah, uh, like people that I've seen. Rekindling your love. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> Big words. Uh, no, I don't know. I use it as, like, a time to, like, reflect, I guess, yeah. on, like, where I started, my personal experience. Let's talk about it. now. So Let's talk about it. Because you obviously are from Columbus, so you yeah. came to the Arnold, right? Yeah. I and mean, you wore a fucking tight T-shirt. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Were, were you wearing a small then? Dude, no. I, I don't think I ever wore a small. Yeah. I don't fucking I believe that for one fucking tubby. second. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, it started way back in uh, – God, I don't even know what fucking year. Yeah, it was. Wait, wait, did your dad bring you or like fucking? Well, I would go to the yeah, Arnold, but I, all, all I'm thinking about is when we drove the U-Haul from yeah. Granville. Oh, right? okay. So we drove the U-Haul from Granville. It was the square pouches of uh, assault sample packets, yeah. and then it was the athletes' company T-shirts. So did you not go to the Arnold previous to working with me? I did. Okay. Yeah. Right. It was kind of like more just like trick or treat. You know, oh, I gotcha. you just yeah, go yeah, around, yeah. you eat protein bars, you, yeah. you take shots of shit. And you so just, did you come here as a high schooler though? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I was actually with uh, one of the guys that was with Serrano. So okay. His name's Taylor Markle. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. I remember Taylor. Mm-hmm. All right. Hey, there's a kid that went to Edison that wants to meet you. Okay. Should That's we, cool. Should yeah, we get yeah, him on? Yeah. Yeah. Should Hell we get yeah. him on here? Yeah. yeah, yeah get him, get him on here. He's going to hop on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. The podcast. He's like, yeah, he's like, all right. Yep. Throw him on. Is it here right here? Yeah. Yep. Hop on. <laughs> he's like, what? you're on the, you're on yeah. the podcast. <laughs> How we doing? What Good, up? man. How are you? Good. What's your name, bud? Grady. Grady. Grady, what's your last name? Board. All right. Oh, yeah. are you Grant's kid? Yeah. Ah, oh, uh, all right. What's up, man? Good to meet you. You too. So you didn't know you were going to be on the show, huh? Yeah, no, I didn't. So you're We're Edison? Live. Yeah. What year? Uh, we graduated last year. All right. Oh, nice. All right. Sick. Yeah, his uh, his whole family's studs. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> My dad said he remembered seeing you in the gym a few times. Oh, so. yeah, for sure. Cause you're, so your dad's, is your Grant? Is that Grant, what I said? Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. your aunt, Carrie? Yep. Yeah, yeah, all right, yep. cool. Yeah. So you, you get, you're on the podcast, you stop by, Edison alum. Yep. One question, business, marketing, fucking lifting, I don't care. What do you got for <laughs> us? Uh, on the spot, kid. I mean, so how, how'd you work your way up from so, – so you come from a small place like Edison. What's yep. your way to get away from that? Well, that's, the, you know what, that's a question I'm going to ask you. So if you know a guy like me came from the exact same spot where you're from – was that some sort of motivation? Like right. the that—that's what my plan was when I yeah. left there, right? Yeah. The the work your way up part, I think, is like, it's kind of crazy because it takes a long time, and you never really even think all of what has happened is actually possible. All of us that are and these guys are working their ways up now, it's like, you believe you think it's possible, but then even some of the shit that happened to me, I still didn't fucking believe it half the time. But I always just never quit dreaming about it man and i kept putting the fucking work that we get from the valley behind it and i just thought if i just keep showing up that maybe it's possible and it far it far surpassed what i ever thought what i would could accomplish to be honest 
So yeah. it's like, but my whole plan was is that there'd be kids like you 20 years later that would go, well, that fucking guy did it, and I know he walked through these halls. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like that. Same with Dustin too. It's like to know the kids from the valley at least even know about us. Right. Like that was like one of my main passions. And when I left and tried to do this fictitious job that was called personal training that I never knew anybody that had in the valley. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm from Barnesville, so I'm from the valley oh, okay. too. So yeah. like one of the biggest things is you know because I, I was looking up to G in high school basically. That's how like we got connected. But the biggest thing is you have to realize that in the Ohio Valley. People from small towns, they get so – their mindset is only, I know this. I only know that I go to this place. People, you know, they work these jobs. If you're not doing this job, then you're probably a teacher. you got to realize, like, moving to Columbus and even a bigger city like this, there's so much in the world. There's so many possibilities. There's way more going on than what's happening in your small towns. you yeah. always got to remember that. Yeah, so me even being uncomfortable and leaving just a couple hours. So I could still go back and forth at home because my grandparents were old. I, I just wanted to make sure I could still be back home. But – seeing more of what was out there just even a couple hours away to help me a ton yeah. and then on top of it when i moved here when i was your age i didn't even know this existed <laughs> I, people were like oh you moved to columbus west side fucking you know the NBC's big here yeah. arnold classic i'm like i didn't know any of that was here dustin just was moving here so i was like fuck <laughs> i'll meet you guys at columbus yeah. so anyway man it was good to good to meet you yeah, and good to have you on the show man yeah, oh yeah great. tell your old man i said what's up it was awesome <laughs> yeah man it's <laughs> yeah. nice to meet you oh yeah Fucking Dude. just jump on the show. Bang. That's so good. It's fucking sick. See, yeah. there you go. Yeah, I that's mean, just that's a little that's, flippy clip. I yeah. think that great uh, great advice, Cole. No, yeah, 100%. I mean, I think, like, yeah, I think people get caught up on, e even in general, like, even in, like, in Granville, coming to the city, you start to get in these modes of, like, yeah. this is how shit operates. I have a routine and stuff. But you got to realize, like, you go to another bigger city, no one knows who you are. They operate completely different. And there's so much more to explore. I think traveling and, and getting experiences is one of the things I think I lacked growing up. I don't know, if Trey, you could talk about that too, but it's like that's why I thought it was so important for my kids to travel. They yeah. need to see that the bubble we're in is not only it. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, yeah, it's like super important for kids to travel, I think, because like, it is like a small bubble. Like when, well, like when you're within like your like small school, you mean like people think like – you don't remember like you have like 100 kids in your class or something yeah. or even smaller that you're graduating with. Like <laughs> this small world, so like there's so much out there though. I mean there's like, what, like 7 billion people in the world? Yeah, so, like, yeah you're just, clicking to the high school that ain't about you. Fuck them guys. Yeah, <laughs> there's, so, there's so many people out there, just so many like places around, like yeah. places that you know that travel and everything. So many people to meet out there. Like, why do you not want to go out there? At least experience it, see yeah. what it's like, and at least see if you like it. Well, and like I know you've always had a draw towards a city life, right? Yeah. But you're from really the country. I mean, outside of Akron, but it's not like downtown Akron, yeah. right? So it's like you go and you see like when you went to NFT in New York or when you go to Art Basel, like how people operate yeah. so different. Yeah, completely it, different. It's completely different. But if you don't ever experience that, even like when we go international before yeah. COVID, I would pick one international, how people operate in Italy, how people operate in fucking Switzerland. Like it's just, you get a concept of that. It's hard yeah. to stay small. Well, I mean, and growing back, there's like, there's really like no jobs. Like there's no opportunity. So that's why I've always been like, if some random opportunity presents itself, I'm eager to go in it. I don't yeah. care if it's good or bad or whatever, just to experience that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it makes sense. What do you think, Danny? Um, first thing that comes to mind is just people being scared, and then also just like, what's the worst that can happen? There you go. So because with you can me, always go back to do the same shit you were exactly. doing. Exactly. Yeah. Because like with my, well, what comes to mind first is when I started at Muscle Farm. Yeah. I mean that's the most obvious one. Yeah, yeah. Pickerington. Where I'm from is is the bubble. I mean, yeah. everyone has their own version. Everybody of has that, their own version, right? But uh, so that was the biggest leap. Uh, you know, probably the most scared I was because I didn't know anybody in Chicago. So therefore, it was the biggest. You moved there by yourself, basically. Yeah, it was the biggest opportunity to grow, and it forced me to grow. So, and then I, you know, I ended up coming back. But I'm like, who knows what would have happened if I didn't come back yeah. with MP things? So. I basically forced Danny to go to Chicago. Well, that was the only yeah. thing open. It was right. the only thing open, and yeah, you did. You kind of forced me because you, you made me make a decision on the phone. Right? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> it was like, oh, hey, you that sounds about there. accurate, doesn't yeah. it? It was like it wasn't like, oh yeah, I'll let you know in a week. Right. No, I was like, hey, what's, what's up, up man? What's up? I think it was one of those things where I was like, it's going to be gone. Like yeah, somebody yeah, else yeah. is going to take it. Well, I've already, I've already seen, I already saw that happen. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I wasn't about to let it happen again. Yeah. Who the fuck is that guy? That was Huck Finn. We should have asked him to hop on real quick. Dude, you ever go, seen go, his videos? Go fucking snap yeah, here, hold on. Where'd he go? He's oh, his booth. He's right there at that booth, I think. Hey, can you go ask him if he wants to hop on the podcast? <laughs> Huck yeah. Finn, can you go? Can you go get him? Yeah. Maybe so what's it? No. What's All right. So basically, uh, he's like 
in my eyes like the stone cold but okay. of uh, weightlifting yeah. and basically his whole thing is he always drinks Miller Lights. So he always says some funny shit. He's always drinking Miller Light. So he's just the juice box in general. All right, fuck it. You lead the way, but fuck yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't know where this is going to go, but obviously he has huge fucking arms. We can ask him some arms questions. Well, that's Maybe why we got the podcast set up, bro. Fuck it. That's hilarious. Yeah, so. Huck Finn. I've seen yeah, him on. So I think we'll he was on. Uh, Dave Tate might have had him on. Yeah, I mean, he's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure he was or his origin story, he was like a prison guard, basically. So he just started making, like, funny weightlifting videos of him in his garage doing, like, crazy lifts. Then he would always stone cold Miller Lights. <laughs> so I'm, I'm assuming he's sponsored by Miller Light by now. I mean, he's probably doing it for fucking a few not, years. but that's but yeah, fucking he's a juice hilarious. Box. That is fucking. Well, that's the. Uh, I don't know. It's weird about the Arnold's changed so fucking much in this amount of time that it's like. It's good that it's busy again, but it's so different than it used what, to be. What, when you say that, what comes first to mind that's changed? Um, I think that the... What sticks out first? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that sticks out is that people aren't giving away as much shit, which us included, right? And, like, the players of the industry, which we're obviously local, but it's like yeah. they're just not traveling to come to it anymore. Yeah. Like, sure. and all the three influencers that... I think are pretty big, which would be CT, Mike O'Hearn, Russ Swole. They're not, not even here. here. Yeah. yeah. Mark Bell's not here. <laughs> it's just like, it's a little strange. strange yeah. yeah. Like the last three rows all the way over there, like those used to be all filled. Yeah. And yeah. now they're not. <laughs> you know, there's so I do, I do like that the sports shit, like the actual, some of the competitions are going on on the main floor. I think that's yeah. really cool. So there has to been some changes that I think are good. But, yeah, it's like, it's a little weird. But. We're here, and I'm glad we did come, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's good, and it's, like, been, been pretty good so far to see everybody. So, Danny, when was your first Arnold? Yeah, what year was it, Danny? So, I, I started doing shit with you, like, in 2011. Yeah, but when's the first oh, time first you came? first Arnold? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it, it would have been in high school. Oh, okay. So, I graduated high school in 2009, so it was probably, oh, like, wow. a sophomore or junior. You see, see so it would been, like, 07 or something like that. Just came right. here to take a picture yeah. with I a mean, bunch of chicks. Dude, yeah. Damn, I never definitely. came here. Probably still got. Dude, I remember getting a picture with uh, <laughs> fucking uh, Bill Kazmaier. That oh, was fucking cool. Yeah. That was sick. He's a fucking dog. Yeah. Nice. And then uh, fucking uh, Forrest Griffin when he was with, oh, yeah. with uh, BSN. That was kind of. Cool. I think the other thing is for me is that I used to look forward to seeing the '70s guys. So I, I remember seeing like Lou Ferrigno. That Lou was Ferrigno, cool. yeah. Ed Corny, Frank Zane. Like I could see all the guys that I studied. They're all either don't come anymore because they're too old, or they passed away. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of. I think that's probably kind of weird too for me. You know what I mean? So, that's uh, there's just a. It's, it's very different. But you gotta evolve. That's Who, what it is. Who's someone here that like? I mean, other than Arnold, you can't pick Arnold. Who's yeah. someone that like you really looked up to that you that you met here? Um, that that I met here. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they're not here. You know, maybe this this year yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but you. Frank Zane was probably the one that. Where I walked up and I was like, oh, shit. And he had, like, a booth. that He had one table. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, he had, like, some books and CDs for sale. If you didn't really study 70s bodybuilding, you know, no people idea. were into Ronnie and all that stuff. They, they walk right by him. And I was like, man, I, 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 I always try to do this. If I get around somebody, I really want – I have, like, a very specific question that they know I actually know their shit. And I asked them about hand position on one of the poses – and he was like, oh, we'll just hit it real quick. So I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. First off, I was like, let me take my shirt off. I was peeled. Take my shirt off. I'm hitting it. And all of a sudden, he's like taking my hands, moving it. And that fucking dust there. Somebody was with me there taking yeah. pictures. Fucking epic. I, it, you, fuck, it was epic. fucking epic. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was like, one, it was cool because I was in shape. Two, it was cool that he was just like not really that busy. So he was like, but I was like, I have Mr. Olympia who looks the closest to me actually helping me do his pose at the booth on a Friday afternoon. It was yeah. fucking, yeah. I mean, it was juice box, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so that was probably one of my yeah, that's cool. favorite things. Uh, when I met, I met Lou Ferrigno here multiple times, but then I kept seeing him in the gym uh, at Venice when I would be out there, yeah. like training with Mike or when I was out with Arnold or whatever. And so I got to kind of know him a little bit. And then Ed Corny, a lot of people, he was starting to get kind of his health was going down, but I would always come and talk to him. And yeah, so it's like, you know, but that's just an era that's. How, how's, by. how's Lou? Like when you're at like when you're at Golds in uh, in California. Yeah, he's super, is he cool. super cool. Like yeah. um, 
I got to the point where he like knew me pretty well, and I don't I don't like keep up with him like that. Yeah, but yeah. like he would come over like when I was at the gym, and be like come and say hi and shit. And oh, I was, okay. I yeah. mean, I grew up. Yeah, I remember the Incredible Hulk. When I'm nine years old, is the show it's the shit. that I'm watching, yeah. and so to become friendly with with Lou at that one point was really cool. Yeah, and he's just a fucking he's a big dude, man. For sure, he's a big dude. I mean, he had a lot of challenges with you know with his uh, hearing and things, and he's he's done really well. So it's pretty cool. Is it weird for you to think going from like you know two ten by tens, we had like literally six foot tables with all these samples and t-shirts on it. Yep, and then we go into like. The fucking daddy of daddies, like fucking daddy? double decker booth with like it's it's pre built, you know, to where we are now. What is that kind of like? Yeah, strike, so I would say that like the first time we went from the booth being small to massive, and then restarting with max effort, it was a little bit weird. I don't even say that. I guess my whole thing with the whole MP thing is that I fucking gave it everything. So it doesn't feel weird to then restart and do it again. Yeah. And and so like me having two booths over having twenty, it really I thought it would phase me differently, but it really hasn't. I yeah. mean, this event has done so much for my career, networking wise, uh, personality wise, that I, I owe a lot more to the Arnold Classic than maybe maybe people realize. Because I mean, I think if I couldn't come and experience this and see those people, see yeah. the mag like, yeah. I really wouldn't have believed it was even possible even more. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, you're selling programs, right? Selling Rhett programs. Rachel got you. Yeah, selling program. programs. Yeah. I mean, so it's like, I think that it helped me tremendously. And the fact that I didn't even plan it at all. Yeah. <laughs> at all. Like, I, not, I mean, I didn't even know a week before the Arnold Classic when I went to it that it was even here. Like, it was even a thing. That's wild. But sounds, it, but, sounds about right. Yeah, but with no media, there's no no yeah. social yeah. media. There's yeah. no way. True. It was yeah. just different times. Literally, Rachel explained it to me. She was like, "Yeah, it's like a bodybuilding show, and they have like an expo." It's funny that she That's explained sick. that to you. So I said, yeah. "This is funny." So I brought this up. I go, "I was like, I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, you had a lot to do with like some of this stuff." She's like, "I planned your whole life." <laughs> 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 hey, you yeah. said she's coming down, right? She's coming down. That she's, might be a she's that, might, that might be yeah. Yeah. She might be the guest. Yeah. That was uh it was pretty fucking funny though. That is amazing. Cool, what was your first experience? Well shit, I mean that well I was about to say like growing up two hours away, like Columbus was a hall. Yeah. Most of the time like I wasn't paying the sixty bucks to drive all the way here and yeah. stuff like that in high school. So my first experience was fucking working the booth, basically. You never so came before? No, I've never I never experienced the Arnold before as a high schooler. As a high school. I never I just Damn. only I only uh, worked it. Worked the booth. That's pretty so cool. So this is like a whole different vibe. So I view everything differently. So I don't know. That's pretty wild. Yeah. I remember like when I first came and with actually I came with Ben. Okay. So Ben, so let me let me paint a picture for Shout you. Out Shout, Shout out Ben. Shout out Ben. Yeah. So Ben this morning. Ben Ben's awesome. So Ben had it's gonna be hard for me to explain this to you, Cole. Okay. A digital camera, but it had like a disc that went in it. Okay. This like nine, I think in like '99. So it was like, I don't know where the fuck he got it. They were super expensive, but it almost had like a floppy disc that went in it. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, dude, he wants to take pictures with every girl that's got like no clothes on, <laughs> okay. right? So we're going booth to booth. He's got, he's just, oh, pick, and he's hype. Yeah. Because he's in the like actual bodybuilding yeah. too. So he like knows everybody. He's like his energy's like here. So I came with him the first time. Yeah. Like yeah, besides doing the programs and and then we competed later that year and stuff. So like Ben's been a roll dog with me on this event yeah. for like 20 years, which is unbelievable. Yeah. But I remember he was like he'd be like, "Oh yeah, I'm falling in love with this one." "Oh yeah, she's going to break my heart." Like it was every, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it was pretty it was pretty funny. Oh yeah. That was good. Uh, Trey, what was your first experience? Um, similar, very similar to Cole's. Like, the first time I was here was working there, too. That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah, yeah. oh, the, yeah. what I was getting at is I remember being out there thinking, how do I get in here? And, like, that that was a big, mm. like, yeah. like deal that how do I go from being at the, um, being a customer or whatever, consumer, to somebody working? And I worked uh, the Gaspari booth first. Oh, really? That's who gave me the first. So... I made 800 bucks for the weekend, and I got free size on and free Super Pump 250. <laughs> it's not a bad game. game. Yeah. It was gay. Yeah, it was a like dog. I was like, all right. So I did that for like, I think two different, two different seasons, and then I think the third one would have been when I started like messing with uh, with some MP stuff. So it's pretty cool. I mean, it, I felt like a G then. 
your whole life. Fuck yeah. yeah. I mean, it was cool. That's wild that you guys never came here as, like, customers. Yeah. No. I, yeah, I never experienced it. I was all, yeah. Well, I mean, that's pretty boss. I mean, also, like, dude, like, ask my parents for, like, 60 bucks to go to something like this. Well, it was only like, $10 it, back then. Yeah, I but mean. But to but drive up. To drive everything. up here for yeah. food and all that stuff, it was, like, that's kind of a big ask, yeah. honestly, for me. Yeah, oh, well, no, it was a big yeah, ask so. for anybody. Well, I never came as a high schooler either, so yeah. that's what Coach Hoover was saying. He was like. He's like, yeah, he's like, I used to tell everybody from the Valley, like, I just load him up in the car. He even said uh, Josh Richards. He said oh, about really? Bobby's uncle, the yeah, fucking yeah. jacked one. He brought him up here. He's like, yeah, it was 10 bucks. He's like, it was $46 today. He looked <laughs> yeah, at him like, nuts. that is crazy. But no, it was, uh, I don't know. I think also, like, I started to realize, like, well, we already know, like, fitness is weird. Yeah. This really highlights it. But, you know what I mean? There's some dudes that ain't been out of their garage in a while. This is our Super Bowl. Yeah. It is the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, it is the Super Bowl. In Ohio it is, for <laughs> sure. What else we got? <clears throat> what do you think about anything else, Danny? You have a moment that sticks out? Uh, Current one, MP time? No, anything? The one that keeps coming back to mind is when Arnold came to the Arnold booth. That was kind of surreal. That was bit. pretty epic. I mean, we had pretty much the MP, the fitness, in like Arnold booth, like it was like that, yeah. that triple sided booth. Or Is it, you mean when he came in like underneath, like and hung out? Yeah, he like well, he like came in and then he's like holding his the Arnold line. Yeah, and, like, yeah. Well, the pull, or a hand the protein off. That was pretty fucking epic because he came out of nowhere. I didn't even see him coming, and then I'm like, that's how he fucking does it. Arnold's in our fucking booth right now. I I think the uh, I think the one for me was when he came in that time, and then my grand my grandfather was actually inside the booth hanging out. So he got to meet Arnold, like, in the, That's like, super cool. in, inside, you know, because yeah. we walk inside, so it was, yeah. like, in a room. And I think the magnitude, obviously he's old, so he don't he don't really know what's going on. When he walked, I think that was the biggest thing when they finally was like, oh, what Corey's doing is pretty big. Like, I can tell yeah. him all I want, but you see the booth, they walked up, and I'm on the side of it, like a big-ass picture. <laughs> and then Arnold rolls by, and, and then that night we went to the After School All-Stars, and fucking Evander Holyfield was there. Oh, it's sick. And so was uh, Triple H. Jeez. And oh, some, man, Hey, sick. And, and uh, someone else, and my grandfather met all those guys, and then Arnold had remembered them from earlier that day. He was, like, blown away. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. so it's, cool. Yeah, it's um, So I, I think that's one of the moments. I think – uh, whenever it was the last uh, event they had at the Vets Memorial before they tore it down, where they used to do the show, and I forget who won. I think it was Dennis Wolf, but I was handing the Arnold Classic Trophy like with Arnold. That was, a, and I have a picture somebody took from behind, so you can see like Arnold, me, and someone else, and you can see the, the crowd. crowd. That's yeah. sick. It's pretty fucking dope because that yeah. to me was like a culmination of like. Okay, I couldn't be here on this stage. What's up, yeah. Cody? Hey, yeah. jump on. He's like, Fuck. oh yeah. <laughs> jump on. Yeah, it's good to see you, bro. Yeah, jump on, dude. We can get a little, get a little. Yeah, yeah, what's yeah, up? yeah, what's yeah. Up? Put it down. Yeah. My dude. What's up? Welcome what's to the on? podcast. Oh, here, go, go right up there, Cody, so you can see it. All right, Cody Stuffy. Yeah. What's going My on, dude. Man? So, I haven't seen you. Since maybe one time since you hurt yourself at the old school meet. Yeah, torn my pack. So Cody was the one that was yep. member. He trained yeah. with oh, us. Yeah. And uh, what what the fuck's been going on? Are uh, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm solid. I got back to uh, like powerlifting just in my free time. Yeah. Uh, not taking it too seriously. Just wanted to get back to functional health. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I had my pec major tendon had yep. completely ruptured. So they had to cut me open. They drilled holes into my humerus. They had to put suture anchors in there. So Jesus. whatever tendon was left on my pec muscle yeah, yeah. back to those sutures, and then they Holy tightened shit. it to anchor the muscle back to the humerus. Yeah. What did what, what they say Like, uh, was the cause? Like, what do you think it was? Uh, I was super cold that morning. My squat max was like mm. 50 pounds more than I had ever done. Your body was just taxed. My nervous yeah. system was just shocked from that squat. Because you were really fucking strong on that I phase, was. Cody. Like, I remember that training phase. You looked yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, like, I thought you were going to make that weight. Yeah. I mean, you thought you were going to. That's why you took it. Exactly. That was my opening yeah. bench. Yeah. I, I was benching 315 for, like, four or five reps at the yeah. time. So, I was not concerned about 315 no. tearing my pec. But that's how it happens, though. It's always random ass shit. Yeah. But yeah. you you were onto it, though. The nervous system thing up to that's what led to it, probably. Exactly. Yeah. And I took pre-workout. Woke up super early. 
didn't warm up properly. It was winter. It was like yeah, the day before yeah. Christmas. I was freezing cold. Uh, so many variables, I think, played into it. Yeah. And, yeah, I for like a year, I didn't bench anything more than like the bar. I threw like 95 on once. Yeah, yeah. Slowly worked my way back up, and then just like a month or two ago, I benched like 320 again. Fuck oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Good for back. you, dude. Yeah. yeah. It was, I was scared. But I had so much yeah. spotters, like I never thought I was gonna bench again, yeah. like heavy weights. Yeah. Well, when I um, when I hey Peters, yeah. when I ruptured my I ruptured my super spinatus, yeah. I couldn't do a push up on my knee. I didn't get it fixed because I was I had that maybe potential, right? I just benched three plates pretty easy the other day with no pain. Yeah. I thought I was fucked, bro. Yeah. But I was optimistic. But right. even though you you're like, all right, I got to get it fixed. But what are where am I? What's my capabilities? Mm -hmm. Talk yeah. about like you're a fucking. I know you're a guy that digs in deep, right? So it's like, what is the like? What did you take from that experience? Obviously, it was a traumatic. You had challenges, but like, what did you learn about yourself? Yeah. I really like through that experience, like the physical aspect of it, it tapped into a new side of my like intellectual potential. Yeah. I knew I had, I knew he had something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> I straight up, like I realized my mortality. Like yeah. I was 24 years old, 25 years old when yeah. that happened. And I just always sold myself short, like saw myself as a college dropout. Like mm -hmm. I failed out my first time and put everything into my physical image yep and that injury like as much as i wish it hadn't happened or how things could have been different they weren't and i just i had no other choice but to accept the circumstances mm -hmm. and i actually like punched into cybersecurity. and yeah. now oh. i'm working at aep fuck yeah doing cybersecurity now um thinking about like going to the fbi or something like, yeah, yeah yeah still keeping my physical fitness but it's more of like a longevity yeah. perspective and like uh, overall well-being and like holistic health kind of yeah. like, functionality is, is my main priority but yeah I like the power lifting stuff I just weighed my option I was like dude yeah. I'm in my 20s like this is the time to learn these lessons yeah yeah I of course the lessons and it's time yeah. to like punch through that barrier so what, what was your uh because obviously i'm a big bench guy and you know hopefully i never tear my pack knock on wood yeah uh but what was your like rehab like like what were the exercises that you were getting do like doing yeah. were you doing isos like what was it dude honestly my rehab was probably one of the worst experiences anybody's ever had because a month or t i had my surgery to repair the pack in january and march was when everything closed because of COVID. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, my, oh, my physical sucked. therapy shut down completely except for like life-threatening holy repairs. shit so they gave me they printed off me a packet of paper at ohio state and they said do these exercises whenever you can and good luck bro and that was so severe you needed help for I god's did. sakes yeah. Yeah, Jeez. thank God I got full functionality back yeah. in my shoulder. Like, well, good I, thing you're in. You're like into this stuff because you probably yeah, did the exactly. research up on your own, which yeah. makes sense. Yeah, Damn, if Cody. I was like a 50 year old and this was like way more taxing on my You'd body, been I yeah. would. And I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, I would have maybe never got functionality back or like full range of motion. Mm. Um, I'm blessed, honestly, for how it recovered and to be lifting weight again. And um, yeah, I'm just thinking, like, I was in a sling for, like, four months on hardcore painkillers. Jeez. Um, and that was the last semester of my exercise science degree. So I was, like, going to class on oxycodone and stuff. And, like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Just Damn, yeah. dude. That <laughs> Damn. Damn. Hard, hard shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you but, think that, that pivot, though, was important for your career? Oh, you seem – I can yeah. feel you. You feel like you're in a good spot. Absolutely. Like, I bought a house, um, got my finances in order in that good, time. Man. Like, really focused on my mind yeah. and my mindset, like, my outlook of life. And, oh, like, yeah. getting all the lessons I learned from you and the time I got to spend with you guys at the 4 a.m. crew. Yeah. Um, I think more lessons came out of that because of the injury. For sure. Than – if everything no had question. just gone perfect and I didn't experience any kind of, like, turmoil yeah. or resistance. Um, yeah, yeah, no one signs up for that, but there's two ways you can look at it. Yeah. And you obviously took the best path. So I'm happy for you, man. That's yeah, cool. I appreciate it. I got my girlfriend here, and this is her first time at the Shout Arnold. Out. So and now you're on a podcast randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's Max Effort. I wonder if Corey's over there. And I just <laughs> saw you. I was like, we got to go say hey. No, it's, uh, I'm glad that you're doing good, man. Yeah, it's, I appreciate uh, it. It, obviously, don't be a stranger. If you need to come see us, do whatever. Please yeah. don't hesitate. I appreciate it. I want to come check out the new yeah, facility. Yeah, dude, of I course. 
Yours is not allowed to bench. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta sign like an insurance waiver. No, so. yeah. yeah. But no, I'm, I'm really glad. Somebody I saw, oh, Derek, my barber. Okay, yeah, I think yeah. he, he mentioned that yeah. he had worked with you or knew that you were yeah. doing some stuff the other day, and I was like, oh, shit, that's good to hear that he's doing good. Yeah. So I'm really glad you stopped by, man. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. If you hear that buzzing in the background, that is the actual lawnmower. Okay, back to the script. Who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming? Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Hear that mm. buzz? Manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, and we have an exclusive offer for you. 20% off in free worldwide shipping with the code, and you guessed it, small arms. Not small wiener, small <laughs> arms. Right. S-M-A-L-L-A-R-M-Z. Z as in zaddy, as in Danny, zaddy daddy. 20% off free worldwide shipping, small arms at manscaped.com. Hear that buzz? That could yeah. be you. That's Cole. right. And listen, I just got to tell you, this is one of the products that I wish I would have had earlier in my life because yes. you know as a young padawan a nice youngling the jungle you know, down there sometimes you know with the inexperience and stuff like that you know i would i would nick myself it'd be a mess it would hurt real bad it might bug me for a few days yep. but you know what this is one of the products that i wish i would have so the lawn uh like uh danny what's inside the package please? i mean the days of being a padawan for grooming are over yes Cole, right so it's time to take your your ball grooming and your grooming overall to the next level so yes. how, how we do that with the uh, you know the lawnmower <laughs> the lawnmower 4.0. It's, 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 it's a um, it's a waterproof grooming tool. Ooh, and it's an easy cleanup. So really? You nice. So you're benefit. telling me that instead of standing over the toilet in like a weird crouch position and <laughs> potentially like nicking my like my taint, I can use this in the shower and now like Michaela won't come in and be like, whoa, why is there a like why does it look like a jungle in here? Why is your Whenever taint I out? could just use it in the shower and it goes down the drain. Is that what you're saying? Hundred percent right. Yes. Wow, I can't wait. Put your taint away. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. What's Trayvon? Got, Trayvon? Listen, okay. Once you get done harvesting the, all those crops, oh, though. Oh. <laughs> I got I got a crop. I got some preserver and a reviver here for you. Okay. Oh, nice. So me personally, I really struggle sweating down there. It get, It's like a swamp. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So talk to first him, of Trey. all, in your gift pack, you're going to get a Manscaped boxer brief. Oh, These things nice. are going to keep you cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Definitely going to enhance the package. But once you get done, though, pull out the ball toner. Oh. Tonable. Tone them up. You got to tone them crops up. <laughs> tone them crops up. No more sweating down there at all. It's going to save your life. Man, save I like it. Swamp ass. Yeah. 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 Hey, save your life. Uh, That's right. Put your taint away. And honestly, from what Trey sounds like, it sounds like after, you know, you get your experience with the lawnmower 4.0 and everything Manscaped has to offer, it sounds like you're going to become a, a professional farmer. Uh, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. I mean, that's what it seems yeah. like. You yeah. reap Padawan to, to groom master. That's right. I'm yeah. basically Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, that's what I'm saying. So, gee, what's, no so what again, about. what's the code for the listeners? If you want to be Obi-Wan Kenobi, the performance packs <laughs> package, <laughs> join over 7 million men worldwide. Trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code, and you guessed it, small arms. That's right. With a Z, Zaddy. At manscaped.com. Right. We right. out of here. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm glad to see you guys. And yeah, glad to see you guys are doing well and thriving. I Hell see yeah. you on the social yeah. media doing your thing. So Hell yeah. I know Don't. you won't stop. You know, like, no. I'm going to keep going, man. Don't be a stranger. Good yeah. to see yeah, you, bro. Thank you. It. Hell yeah. All right. That was fucking, that, yeah, it was good, Later, man. Bro. That was fucking awesome. See you, brother. Should we get uh, yeah. Peters? Yeah. Should we get a juice box? Hey, Peters. Peters. You're on. Yeah. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? We got Mr. No Bad himself, reoccurring guest. You know, up, this is slut? fucking awesome, bro. Let's ride, let's yeah. ride, let's ride. What up, Ryan Peters? Ride. What up, motherfucker? <laughs> hey, this has been uh, an interesting... Yeah. Uh, my energy right now is brought to you by Pre-Extreme. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Pre-Extreme! Pre uh, it's fucking awesome. Oh, dude, I'm fucking wired. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and, I, and, I, and I worked out like two hours ago. Oh, and that's I, sp amazing. I spent an hour driving in circles trying to find fucking parking. So oh, man. shit. Bad choice. Uber. So arms? this. Arms? Hey. Uh, now nah, just some. This is the time whenever oh, the Rolls Royce. Cut that, cut that, that drop. Never mind. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. This is when the Rolls Royce pays off. I just pull that bitch up to the Hilton and they uh, want to park it out. Yeah. Front. Yeah. I, I, dude, I didn't even go through that little circle. I should have. I should have yeah. I I I I just done ballet there and probably yeah. saved myself an hour. It, was, it yeah. was the move for sure. Dude, how is it going? It's going good. You know what? It's been like awesome to see the customer. It's been cool to do content. 
Yeah. Like we just been, we did four podcasts yesterday. Let's go. You know, a couple people that we would have never podcast. Well, maybe uh, Wyatt eventually, but we got to grab the ice barrel guy. Another guy that's like a real analytical guy. I got Kenny Santucci. He was a guy who was at Reebok with me. It was like, this is a fucking, yeah, and AJ Roberts, old West Sider. Juicy, like, yeah. yeah, it was just really yeah. good shows, man. It was cool. And yeah, it's big it's wild because you feel like you're in your own world, even though all this shit's uh, going it's, on. It's Yeah, I prefer the headphones. It's fucking yeah. titties, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's good. What, uh, yeah, where are you, what the fuck you been doing? Yeah, what the fuck? Uh, I've seen you in a while. Yeah, well, I, I retreat, like, I went to help. So, dude, I went down to Bragg for some craziness. Uh, That's awesome. And with their special missions unit down there. And, Dude, their like their setup is better than the NFL for like their elite guys. Really, really cool to see like their whole Fuck training yeah. facility, and then they get like their whole compound is like secluded. It's an incredible location. And so then, like, you were fucking in heaven. Dude, I was in it, and then it's, it's like I'm helping out the best Americans there are on the fucking planet. So That's I was sick. so hyped. That's and so cool, bro. It was really cool, and then that like they show appreciation both ways and have them call me patriotic i'm just like oh my god <laughs> 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 yeah. but uh but that was cool but i mean you're contributing to yeah. them feeling better no it's really really cool really fun and then uh then i went to montana to help laura move so and that was a workout in and of itself also sponsored by pre-extreme yeah. <laughs> oh yeah yes yeah so Fuck yeah Dude, that's I'm, cool about through my first bag yeah i um i uh connected who was it we had fall brian Oh, Kenny. boom. Kenny. Yeah, oh, it was Kenny. Kenny. Yeah. Kenny, yeah. I yeah, saw so, yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. the New York strength guys. Yeah, did you meet him? Yeah, 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 no, yeah. no, he just followed me, so yeah. I followed him yeah. back. I yeah. told yeah. him yeah. that, yeah. dude, yeah. so he was on road rules, like, for eight years. <laughs> and then he used to uh, host the Jersey Shore after party <laughs> show or yeah. some yeah. shit. He's a fucking character. I, I like that. Dude, he was like, yeah, man. I was on, you know, MTV's. Like, I got so much pussy I didn't deserve. We were <laughs> fucking <laughs> dying, bro. So he's a kid, but he's he's building a really cool event. We're definitely going to go to it in the city in September. But yeah. I think, like, uh, being like John Bon Jovi's trainer and shit. Okay. Yeah. Nope. yeah. <laughs> well, well dude, it's funny. You see, like, all these celebrity trainers and even no. uh, who do I have on the podcast? Adam Von Rothfelder, the, like, the owner of Strong Coffee. They're probably here. Oh, I know Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think you guys did, yep. like, all the covers together because yep. he, he brought you up, too. Yeah, he, yeah. He said you're he's, he's a grinder. Yeah, but, he, I mean, he trained some of the, like, highest, like, CEO performers on top mm. of some celebrities and stuff. And then, like, which uh, gets you traction to some yeah, extent. Yeah, but course. then he kind of found his passion with his coffee. It's cool yeah. just to see that. Well, just Plus, he's human. an athletic in shape dude yeah. he's a he's a grinder like he's he's good people it's just cool to see who trains the people we like kind of look at and on the movies or even like the best athletes yeah. you know it's cool to see the the mindset from those boys for but. sure yeah yeah I think Peter, well, like, like what's your thoughts that are on right now like you know, like I always just I always know in the back of my head this is the best people watching in the world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> literally the best. Like yes. we should we should have to like pay to like, just like, yeah. 100% yeah. Well, it's like, I, like you get like I was like I know I'm gonna see some characters, and you get yeah. here and it's like ooh what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh damn. Even better, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. even better than expected. Yeah, it's a, it's awesome. So it's just fun. Then you see all like everybody's uh got their vlogs going and all that kind of stuff so it's yeah. fun yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah so like, I, I can't remember what the dude's name is big yoke dude just walks around and tries to fight people on the basketball court and stuff yep. he was over there doing content so i gave him a little shoulder check let him know <laughs> daddy's home yeah daddy's home <laughs> but, that's right <laughs> but no dude it's always fun uh i haven't like i, I just sought you guys out you guys are my first stop yeah uh, my, my guys with the breath belt are here and then i got some other guys with uh, i don't know even some of the brand names now yeah, but yeah. like different they're not, not some of their clothing brand things like that but I, I do still i still still think it's always different like it's evolved over the I know, and i know you guys have seen it where it, yeah. it used to be like six big stands there's the certain cages everybody's at and yep. then it's not and, like that right now no it's just there's so many new curated boutique yep. brands and some of that kind of stuff where it's just like i don't even know what stuff is anymore yeah and then and it's evolved but, a lot. but it's like the big things are energy drinks I know. And it's I not even like, straight supplements anymore. Well, yeah, well, I heard I heard uh, Bucked Up but dialed their shit down, and then Rain and Bang aren't as, like, big. You don't have, like, the full techno dance no, bo- booty shake. No, I haven't seen that at all. Yeah, yeah. you don't see that It used at to all. be, like, spring break in here, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's still not not spring break. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it's a- and yeah, just and then just uh, I don't know. I but, I just saw some dudes and some nut huggers on the way in here, and I'm just like, <laughs> top huggers. I just I also I yeah. also hate humans when I come here sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of tinted red going on around here. It's like yeah, yeah. A lot of grape, grape smuggling. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. hey, yeah. I think Brian, you should take up that sport. 
Yeah, the, the, yeah, dude. That's honestly the one of my favorite fighting. fighting. I will say. Mid, did you see the medieval guys? Yeah. Oh, he yeah. missed it. Like one of my armor. They're like in straight armor. Yeah, dude, that, that's sweet. Have you ever yeah. seen this, uh, the scene in Shrek where they're like wrestling? It's like a wrestling thing inside of the Coliseum. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's literally what they're doing over there. <laughs> they're beating <laughs> the <laughs> shit out of each other with like, some with, like medieval swords shit. and shit. It's pretty and they're wearing the full armor and shit, so they're like stabbing and beating the fuck out of each other. That'd be a hell of a vlog. That'd be super fun. Dude, it looks awesome. Well, just to do it like once. It's like you guys ever go to like the trampoline places when they actually have the two gladiator stands where you have the two like no. the, oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Q-tips. Yeah, yeah. 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 that'd be fucking. Uh, fun. I did that in Houston one time with some of my teammates. So freaking fun. You're trying to knock them off. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. Platform. We need to do that. But honestly. then, uh, yeah, it does sound. Yeah, it sounds awful. Um, yeah. But they have. I heard they have like ultimate tag here now too. Is it is. Yeah. It's right. It's, yeah, right, it's right, right over, over there here. in the corner. Yeah. That's I'll, pretty cool I'll too. I'll check that out. And then it's like parkour but tag, right? Yeah. Basically, yeah. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I still people don't. I don't think people know how much goes on at the on top of like the bodybuilding. It's body like a hundred fucking events. And then yeah. So then uh, I don't know if you guys know Vitor. He's a jujitsu coach over at Ronan here in Columbus, mm. and he's got. I mean, he's coaching from eight to. 8.30 to 8.30. Wow. Just, like, white belts to black belts. It's like So I'm going to go check out some of the jujitsu stuff. Hell, yeah. But, yeah, all that stuff is crazy, dude. Brian, when are I'll, we going to get you back periodically in the morning? Uh, Next week. Really? Yeah, so I'll come at least twice next week. And then um, – we need, we, need, we need a dose of Brian Peters in the morning. At yeah. Least once, at least once a week. Yeah, April, I'm going to be – Daddy's going to be sporadic. And yeah. then um, – <laughs> April, and, I think it's been a year. But, uh, you've been because like, you've been doing so good. Yeah, you know I'm saying I mean? like this April, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I won't be. I'll be gone like almost like three weeks, and then May I should be around. Yeah, and so May I'll get get a heavy dose. But uh, it's only because I love you. Yeah, no, dude, I, yeah. I, I love I love the culture. I love the crew, man. Um, of course. And I st- obviously I still interact on socials when I can. But uh, in that round, I finally got back to training though, which has been huge. The lunges That's were good. huge on the road. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Shout out. Yeah, the, well, it's just like it's it's stealing and yeah. it's easy and it kind of keeps me just like like I'd say it keeps my upper body like straight too because I, yeah. I was really only like training like three times a week like yeah. weights um but yeah dude i was lunging at truck stops dude i, I fuck yeah dude I, I, I was lunging on hikes like i'd stop and find a hike real quick yeah, yeah. just to like flush my legs yeah dude it was yeah, fucking that's cool bro yeah it was tight what uh did you get to train with the military guys at all like lift weights or anything it was no. all yeah, okay no I was uh dude i was and i was supposed to i i I was supposed to go in February and go to a bunch of military bases in Europe, okay. and then uh, I, like I had a conflicting thing with that field crap thing out in Salt Lake, so I had to go to that. But I was supposed to go and actually like lift weights for like like kind of like an NFL reach yeah, out, yeah. like legends kind of thing. That'd so, be cool. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna hopefully do that next year. But like yeah, that my goal is to like kind of like ground and pound with the boys at, at some sure. point just to see what kind of dog. Yo, take. I want to get your thoughts. So the NFL Combine, did you see that defensive lineman from Georgia ran a 4-4 or whatever that yeah, was? No, he did not. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what, what was his weight? Because the Northwestern kid I'm, ran a 4 I'm pretty four, sure. Nine. I'm pretty sure he was weighing like 285. The Northwestern yeah. kid. But, oh, you're saying the Georgia guy? I think guy? the Georgia kid was like 285, 290. And he ran a 4 Dude, four? it was like one of the fastest 40s. Like, yeah. 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 He he uh what? he be, he beat some wide receiver. Showed him beating uh, some wide receiver. Sa- Saquon and Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, like dude was flying. What? No, and like and I had the, I don't know who I had this conversation with the other day, but just the difference between like 2000 and 2005 to now, like the speed, the size, and like that's where you see like the, the smart trainers and like yeah. The, and yeah, some guys are freaks to some extent, but they're not optimized. And yeah. like once you get good hands on you, dude. Some of these guys are just monsters, and like yeah. two eighty five four four. He played at Georgia. Yeah, is yeah. He, yeah, was he the D lineman that was wrecking everybody? No. Uh, no, you're thinking no, you're thinking of oh, a different yeah, guy. Okay, that guy's having trouble right now. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the guy who had to return to Georgia, to Athens, Georgia. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 On, on police re- reprimand, but yeah. damn. Yeah. But uh, no, dude. Yeah, the, the big bodies moving. I do. I, I love the combine. Uh, co- I mean, it gets a lot of weight and a lot of attention, but like at the end of the day, you got to play ball. But I, do, I, I love seeing. I love watching the linebackers do the combine drills there. Yeah, I, that's one of my favorite things is to watch how they move. Uh, yeah, who's who do you think the top linebacker prospect is? I have no clue. No? I'm, I'm so far removed from college yeah. football, but uh, uh, that that DN from Georgia was impressive. Just like all his drills and his, his yeah. numbers and that kind of thing. But I have I've been so far removed from that. I couldn't yeah, tell you. Out. Yeah, no, makes sense. I'm, I'm uh, I was more intrigued by CJ Stroud's comments yesterday. What he said? What was it? I saw where he said something, but I haven't. We've been so busy, I haven't seen it. I mean, like, I I respect the the confidence, but just basically saying he's been the best college football player the last two years. And which I mean, you can make a light argument for that, but that's yeah. a pretty bold statement. I, 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 I Light's saw, a good way to put it. Yeah, I saw <laughs> I saw where they were giving him uh, they were giving him crap because he said the quarterbacks that he looked up to was uh, Deshaun Watson and Mike Vick, and people were like, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure OJ was his favorite running back too." Oh, <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> it was rough. 
Damn. No, yeah, that and that. I mean, uh, Stetson Cologne could say, like, he was better than C.J. Stroud. I mean, come on. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That, that's where he said it. He, his quote alongside that was, if I would have beat, won the two Michigan games, which he obviously lost both of them, he yeah. goes, I would have been the Heisman winner back-to-back ba -back years. I still don't think that would have happened either. But back-to-back, -back, yeah. People would have thought a lot more of him. He could have beat Michigan fucking once. Yeah. The only t Honestly, the only real game we saw from him was the last game yeah. Yeah. against Georgia. 100%. That's it. Yeah. Because he actually didn't look like it was business as usual. I'm trying to get to the league. Like, I get all that, but that's where we got the real C.J. Stroud. If we had that the whole time, he probably would have won one Heisman, and he would have beat Michigan at least one Because, I mean, time. really, I in, all the, in all the big games, like, it, they lost. Like, uh, I guess Utah in the Rose Bowl, but, I mean, like, it's, it's the Rose Bowl. Like, half the players weren't even playing. Like, it was the last game of the season, but, yeah. like, against Oregon. They lost. Uh, I guess Notre Dame, but Notre Dame was not the team, obviously, there that they good. that they were hyped up to be. So, yeah. I mean, every other game they 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 couldn't finish. Yeah, that's why we're gonna have a bot, uh, fucking Buckeyes podcast. That's bro. right. That's yeah, right. we're getting ready to do the Boomcast. Boom. So yeah. we're, gonna, we're we're gonna shift the gears on the bet. We're still doing betting, still, but yeah. we're gonna do more Ohio State yeah. specific because there's like pretty good open market for that right now. So 100%. Yeah. We're, we're going to shift gears on that. You know, yeah. we're just media out here, Brian. Yeah, giddy up. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we got plenty of Buckeyes in the corner. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, yeah, Zach and Bobby Carpenter were talking about doing one, too. So They should. Yeah. There, there's, there's a lot of opportunities right yeah. now, well, just And the, the, fin the fanaticism of the uh, Buckeyes. And then uh, Will and Taylor are coming to town. End of I the, saw end, that. End of this month, I think 28, 28th and 30th through the 30th. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're going to go out to docks one day. And then, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I forgot. It will yeah. work with Doc. Yeah, well, that's how they he kind of got. But he used to work with um, John Meadows. Oh, okay. yeah, I don't know if you knew that. But will came, that's up, funny. Will, will came up here for three months and, like, went full bodybuilder with John Meadows at one point. What? Isn't that cool? Small that world. is really cool so and he, pretty, yeah. pretty wild. Yeah, so he lived at some, like, town in suites or whatever the extended stay yeah, yeah. And, ah! and trained with John, dude. So, yeah, Will was always kind of, like, pursuing, like, the yeah, edge, yeah. too. So. It was cool to see that, and then obviously with John Meadows passing, like uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a cool. Uh, I think wow. it's cool deal. Like yeah, the Swiss Conference did a whole tribute to John, which was cool to hear. Uh, like Matt winning and different, like Doc was up there. The whole panel. people loved him. Oh yeah, and they just kind of, kind of love with his heart, but he's like this tough, comical character. He's a, yeah. he's a good, cool human. I never, I never was around him. I somehow him because he was in Pickerington, right? Uh, yeah, or, the, the task area. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah something so like I mean, that, he was, yeah. but I just never ran. What's up, Dan? I just never ran into him at all, which is crazy. What's up, dude? Oh, Dr. Dan. Yeah, man. You doing good? Up, you know that guy? Yeah. yeah. Good. How are you doing? You taking over for Doc as the medical director? <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, get yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, you said grappling's over there? Uh, never mind. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to get <laughs> I fucked myself. Well, well, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I forgot I was on the podcast for a second. So yeah. he, um, <laughs> Dan was uh, basically like an intern when I was messing around with Doc like yeah. forever ago. So now he's like a full-blown, like, is he MD? Yeah, right? uh, yeah uh, MD, and then he is part-time in the military. So he, he actually just got back from deployment to have, I think it's his, their first kid born. Mm. Um, yeah, he was. They, they were over at Docs around Christmas, and I got to see him and his wife. And but he had just gotten back from shit like Saudi Arabia or something. Whatever base we have a base that's neutral over there. Yeah, and yeah, So yeah. that's where he was at for a couple months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he, yeah. Uh, he's wicked smart too. He's fun to talk to. Yeah. No. For sure. Yeah. But then, uh, yeah, it's fun to get him Doc and Dill going on some stuff. I just like. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm fire. trying to get Treadway to go get Huck Finn and see if yeah, he wants to get, get on the podcast. Do you know anything about Huck Finn, Peters? No, I, I don't. I'd have to see him though. It's uh, he looks it's like Stone Cold right drinking Miller Light all the time. No, that's tight though. I like yeah. it. I like his persona already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Danny, Danny, just tee up the arm question. Yeah. Yeah, tee it up. Easy one. You're gonna give us an intro. Obviously. Yeah, I'll give us. Yeah. <laughs> so good.